The software industry is facing a massive problem that I don't think anybody's really talking about it. And no, I'm not talking about this problem. You see, every major coding tool on the market today, from Cursor to GitHub Copilot to Bolt, relies on foundation models to generate code. But there's a catch. You see, these models have got a knowledge cutoff date. Without extensive examples to train on, they simply cannot reliably generate code using newer libraries or APIs. This creates a dangerous feedback loop. New libraries struggle to gain adoption because AI can't effectively use them, while existing libraries become frozen in their current form, unable to make meaningful syntax changes without breaking AI compatibility. Theo described the situation on a recent stream as, I don't love that thought. Let me show you an example of what I mean. Imagine you're building the next revolutionary app. You ask your AI coding assistant to help integrate a modern database, for example. The AI spits out convex code that's about 80% correct, but it hallucinates basic schema details and makes some fundamental mistakes. This isn't just frustrating, it's actively holding back our industry. You see, libraries can't evolve, developers waste time fixing AI-generated bugs, and new technologies struggle to gain traction. So what can we do about this? Well, this is where evals come in. You can kind of think of evals as an automated testing system for AI. But instead of just checking how the code works, they verify that the AI truly understands how to use your library or system correctly. Major players are taking notice. For example, Y Combinator's Jared Friedman recently highlighted how some startups now consider their eval sets more valuable than their actual code base. Wow. This represents a fundamental shift in how we think about software development. Well, how do evals work exactly? Well, if you're familiar with TDD, Test Driven Development, you should feel right at home here. We write a prompt and then we run it against a model uh, and then we have a framework that grades the output. If the tests fail, then we refine our prompt until it passes. And once it passes, we're done. Let's try and make this a little bit more concrete by taking a look at Convex's evals repository. Each eval contains a task.txt, which contains the prompt we will pass to the model and an answer, which is what we expect the output to look like. Let's take a look at this eval. It's designed to test if the AI can properly implement database indexing. Taking a look at the task.txt, we start by giving it a specific convex schema to use. Then we tell it to write a query named get user by email that takes an email address as an argument, efficiently looks up the user by email and returns all fields for that user if found. Now, when we run this eval for the first time, the AI will probably fail. Why? Well, for example, it might generate something that looks like this. This code works, but it's not efficient. For example, it would scan the entire user table for each lookup. So instead, it should use the index that we provided for it on the table. So the next step in our eval loop is to refine our prompt. And we do this by providing a set of guidelines with every single prompt to the model. And it's these guidelines that effectively are the things that fill in the knowledge gap that the model has. So to fix our index users eval, we should add a new guideline. Do not use filters in queries. Instead, define an index in the schema and use with index instead. Now when we run the eval again, the AI should produce the correct solution, which might look something like this. Fantastic, we've now plugged one hole in our model's knowledge. To automate the testing of the model's output, each eval has a grader file that automatically checks what the model produces against our handcrafted correct answer. The grader file is just a Veep test file that runs through a battery of tests for each eval. It tests things like, does the outputted function look right? Or also, does it work as expected? So then we just do this a bunch of times. We, we create a new eval, we write a task for it, and then we create a correct answer and grade it. After doing this, we end up with a set of clear guidelines that address the knowledge gaps in the AI model. We can take that, those guidelines and just concatenate them down into a single file. And once we have that, we can go ahead and plug it into whatever our favorite AI tool is. For example, when I use them in uh, Cursor's Composer for my tic-tac-toe demo application, I found that I got significantly better performance than any of my other previous attempts. It's, it's really quite good now. So before I wrap up, I'd like to share some key principles I've learned while working on evals. One, keep each eval focused on testing just one specific thing. Like test-driven development, it's much easier to isolate problems when each test has a narrow scope. Two, strike the right balance when writing a task for the model. The task shouldn't be so descriptive that it gives away the answer, 
but it needs enough detail for the model to generate what we want and for us to automate the grading properly. Three, build guidelines iteratively. Start simple and add more as you discover common failure modes. We found that some of our evals are currently really kind of starting to push the limits of the, of the current foundation models, which suggests maybe we should simplify some of those evals. So what's next? Well, we're currently actively working on an eval set, so expect that file that I've linked down below to continually improve. And in the future, who knows? I mean, I can imagine a state where we get to where the model itself is able to improve and write its own guidelines. You can imagine a, a different model analyzing the eval output and automatically refine the prompts. Uh, and this could create an endless loop of AI self-improvement. Pretty cool concept, but maybe a tad scary. <laughs> So in conclusion, for us, the evals have been super effective at plugging the knowledge gaps in the underlying models. If you'd like to see more of this kind of thing in the future, please drop me a message down in the comments. Until next time, cheerio, bye.